Hi guys, Johnny in the kitchen. I'm motivated to make uh, breaded chicken cutlets and I'm gonna show you how to turn those into uh, chicken a la parmesan. But first, it's like Christmas for me. I got a haircut yesterday and I got a delivery from Italy with some of my favorite uh, treats. I've been waiting for this new press to come out this is going to be my finishing oil. I don't know if you can see it good. It's called uh, La Mola, and uh, that's my last name, Mola. So I've been waiting for this. They ran out of it. This is the last uh, November press. So I was able to get it, but they only got these small bottles. So I got to be careful with this as a finishing oil. And then I've been looking for this one, too. I couldn't find it in the neighborhood. This is uh, Giuseppe G Juicy, and this is uh, an aged balsamic that I'm going to use as a uh, as a finishing balsamic. I won't I won't cook with this at all. I got another one. Juicy is one of my favorite labels. They only been making this like 1607 or something, so I haven't been able to find it. So I got it online. And another thing I've been looking for. This folia nero. This is Mayani chocolate. And these uh, little bars are very fragile, but they uh, look like uh, tree bark. And it's really a delicious dark chocolate. You got to be careful. When you touch these, they start falling apart. So I always have something underneath just in case because I don't want to I don't want to miss any. OK, enough of that. Let's get to the chicken cutlets. So this all came about because a week ago or so, my uh, niece Terry, who lives up in outside of Seattle, uh, texted me all upset because a friend of hers wanted to make chicken cutlets a la Parmesan. They couldn't find nothing on my website. So I had to show them. I, I did do a post with the recipe for chicken cutlets and years ago, I made chicken cutlets in a uh, episode that was called the chicken and potato cook-off, but it was buried in this uh, uh, larger video. I was doing a competition with this guy who just uh, published the Beyond Pasta cookbook with all the recipes from when he lived with it and own in Rome, and I did my, my mother's versions. Anyway, I think I won that contest. But anyway, Terry reminded me, I love cutlets. It's a big part of my kitchen. They deserve their own videos. So here it is. So I'm going to go out of order here because I want to start uh, the marinara sauce first because I'm going to need that for when we make the uh, Parmesan. So let me show you what I got for that. I got the um, San Marzano tomatoes that I just squashed up by hand. And this one isn't DOP, but it's a biological, an organic uh, San Marzano tomato from that same area south of, of uh, Naples. So I'm going to use those today. Then we got, of course, our baboom garlic. I got some basil and I got some uh, oregano, the wild oregano from Sicily. Let me show you what that package looks like, because I really love this stuff. So this is uh, Oregano di Sicilia Biologico. So this is wild uh, basil on the branch. So I'm going to use a little bit of that to, uh, to flavor the modern sauce. So it's going to have both basil and a little bit of an oregano. So that's it for that sauce. And then I'm going to tell you what we got over here. I got some beautiful uh, uh, thinly cut um, chicken cutlets that I got down at uh, Little City yesterday. Mike did a nice job cutting them up for me. And these are simply going to get uh, put into an, an egg wash with parsley and pecorino salt and pepper. That's it. And then they're going to go in the egg wash, into flour, into breadcrumbs, and then we're going to fry them up. 
So for the egg wash, I'm going to use uh, the parsley, the pecorino, salt and pepper. That's it. Okay. So let me get started over here with the San Marzano. And then I'll put those to the side and uh, let that reduce down to the right thicknesses that I can use them after we fry up the cutlets. So here's my extra virgin olive oil. I ain't using the La Mola, that's a finishing oil. This is my parton and my cooking oil. That's really delicious. This is from Sicily. And that one over there, the La Mola, is uh, uh, grown and pressed outside of Rome. This woman does a beautiful job, but it's hard to find it. She does very small uh, production. In fact, I noticed on the back of the bottle, I had forgotten about this. They number every bottle. This one's number 20 out of 328. So I guess that's what they made in this size. So good, I got one of the first ones. It's probably good. Okay, so where were we? Oh, I got to do this. So let me do the bob boom. Shut that off a little bit. I'm talking too much. Get my knives. And we'll do a little bob boom action here. Here's one. And here's two. And again, this is lunch with Johnny. So I'm only making enough for myself. And uh, it's uh, not the, the full recipe. The full recipe is is in the post. So I'm just going to make enough of what I need. Let me see what we got over here. Take this tip off and let's do one more. Uh, boom. Take the paper off. Okay. I'm going to clean this up a little bit over here. Okay. So Put this in, we're gonna bring the oil and the garlic up to temp so we can infuse the oil with the garlic flavor. So once this heats up a little bit, I'll be able to just kind of scoot it down. Hey, I forgot a whole bunch of stuff for the for the setup. I was so excited because the Italy package I was setting up and I got a thing from uh, UPS, they just delivered it. So I had to run downstairs. I don't want nobody to steal my Christmas present. So I got interrupted. So let me get a few things I need over here. My wooden spoon, and we always need the tongs. Okay, so I'm getting a sizzle. I'm gonna bring these down and just let them infuse the oil. I don't wanna get much color on that or else the garlic's gonna get bitter. So I think we're good. And let me put some of the, hey, the San Marzano tomatoes. Hey, I'm walking around a lot today. If you were over here and I was making uh, some stuff for dinner or anything, that's what I do. I'm not the most organized cook. I'm going to turn this down because that oil is going to be hot. Let me get some of this in here. Put into hot oil. It's such a good idea. I don't know if I'm going to use. Uh, okay, I'll put it all in. Because you know, it's always good to have some marinara sauce in the fridge. You never know when you might need it, and it'll keep for a while. <clears throat> Oops. Get rid of these papers into my compost pail. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me just uh, stir this around. And all we want to do is simmer this so that it's going to reduce in volume. We're going to we're going to steam off some of that water. But first things first. Some nice uh, sprig of basil. We're going to put that in, and then. I'm going to take some of this Sicilian oregano and I'm just going to, with my hand, let it rain down. 
And my mother, a lot of times, when she, she made her, uh, her gravies, her sauces, a lot of times she would combine these two herbs. Depending on what I'm making, sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. But this one, I like that little note of the, ore of the oregano. Oops. Let me get this out of here. Hey, I burned myself. Okay, put that over there. Give this another stir. Make sure the basil's immersed in the sauce. And then we're going to be able to switch pans and get to the chicken. Okay. I'm going to just put this on the other burner and uh, put it on a low simmer. And just let it go for a while. And again, we just want to reduce some of the water out of that. Okay, let me shut this off. Now, let's talk about chicken cutlets. So, cotoletto alla milanese was uh, originated in Milan, in that area around uh, Lombardia, up in northern Italy. They say the first record of making a veal cutlet was sometime like around 1100. So they've been doing it for a while. But what they do is they take a veal chop. So it's a pretty big, you know, the bones like this. I'm gonna to try to put a picture of one that I made so you can see it. And they, they pound out the meat of the chop and they leave the bone in and then they bread it and fry it. And because it's so big, it's got a nickname. It's Orecchio d'Elefante because it's a big flappy piece of meat. It looks like an elephant's ear. So the first time I ever had, I never had it growing up. My mother always made boneless cutlets. And I make them out of uh, chicken. I make them out of veal. I make them out of beef. I make them out of pork. I even make them out of tofu. Because sometimes I may want to make them out of veal. And somebody, who doesn't eat veal? Who doesn't eat meat? So I'm always happy to satisfy everybody at the table. Um, so for this one, I'm using the chicken, right? So we got to do the egg wash first. That's all this stuff. Oh, that's the, the garlic I didn't like. Okay. Okay, got my Petaluma eggs, jumbos. So this farm is uh, north of the Golden Gate Bridge. So these are they're, uh, free range. They only eat vegetables, these chickens. They probably eat better than me. So I'm going to use three here. I don't know how many we're going to need. But I'm going to show you if there's any left over, what I, what I do with it. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, that's that. Right, what am I looking for? Oh, I want a paper towel. Here's one. Okay. So to the eggs... We got some parsley. Just gonna break some of this off. And I'm gonna chop that up. And that's gonna go in the eggs. I got a lot to do, so I better I like a lot of parsley. Some people don't like it as much as I do, but I'm cooking. So let's just chop this up quickly. Sometimes it's a more delicate preparation. You know, I'll get rid of the stems, but here it really doesn't make any difference. And I'm doing a pretty good mince here. And again, I forgot my fork. So let's beat these. Be easier to mix in the other ingredients. So this is a style of cutlets, not from Milan or up north. It's the way my mother made it. So it's more like the cutlets I find in uh, Naples uh, and environs down in Southern Italy. I just love these. Cutlets are one of my favorite dishes. 
And finally, they're getting their own episode. In Johnny, Lunch with Johnny series. Okay, let's get this all in here. Before I forget, a little bit of salt because the pecorino is salty. And some freshly ground black pepper. Now, why am I using pecorino? Because for the egg wash, I want that more depth of flavor that you get from a pecorino, right? It's a little bit more ro robust than the than the Parmigiano. So let me um, look at tell it, right? Always look for the one with the black wax. It's one of my favorites. And you know, when I'm using it for an egg wash, whoop, there's a nice big piece that fell in. I'm gonna have to do something with that. I use this uh, bigger grate because it's the, the, these strands are gonna break up in there in anyway. So there's another debate about this. Some people, they don't put the seasonings in the egg wash. Like my friend in New Jersey. I was talking to her and told her I was gonna be making this. And she reminded me that she doesn't put the parsley and the cheese in the egg wash. She puts it in the breadcrumbs. I don't do it that way. You could do it that way if you want. I'd rather have this uh, adhering right to the uh, cutlet. And then you get all the flavor coming out on the inside of the uh, breadcrumbs. I think you lose some flavor when you put it in the breadcrumbs and then that's going to all get put into the hot oil. Let me see. I think I may need a little bit more pecorino. Okay, that should do it. But because this is, I'm going to show you all the Parmigiano. That's why I got the that this piece of Parmigiano over there. Okay, we're good to go. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. And we'll start bread ending this. So you got to make a little production line. We got the flour, which I'm going to put right here. This is my final dish for the when they're breaded. And here's my breadcrumbs. So I never throw bread out. If it, uh, it's starting to stale, I'll stale it in the oven, and then I'll make my own breadcrumbs. So these aren't. I had to buy these. I, I'm all out of bread. Look, it's the only little piece of uh, stale bread I got left. So not enough for what I got to do. Let's get going here with these. They go in the flour first. You just want to make sure you coat them all over on, on both sides. But you don't want too much, so I'm going to tap off any excess. And you just want to make sure that you got it everywhere. Like that. Tap it off a little bit. Goes right in the egg wash. Turn it over. And then I like to let some of that egg drip off. Because I'm just using this really to uh, make the breadcrumbs ad adhere. Okay. And then we'll cover some up over here. Press this down so we get enough on the first side. Then we'll turn this over. Make sure the... Breadcrumbs are spread out evenly, and we'll do the second side. And if I miss some on this side, eh, just with your hands, and then gently pr press it down, because you want to make sure the breadcrumbs stick to the cutlet. Okay? See what we got? Beautiful. Put this over here. Let's do another one. I'm going to make four. That way we'll have two cutlets on their own and two magically I'll turn into a la parmesan. 
with the amount of nice sauce and mozzarella and some grated Parmesan. Okay, let me let me grab this over here and put down a little bit more. Make it easy for myself. Again, let some of this ex egg wash drip off right into the breadcrumbs. Get it started on the other side by throwing stuff up to here. And then we'll turn it over. See what we got going. Huh, good. That didn't work well. And we'll check it again on the other side. Just gently pre uh, uh, press the breading down, the breadcrumbs. Not too hard, because you don't, do you want a thin coat of breadcrumbs? You don't want to be eating just bread when you make these. Okay, two more. Let me get going. And then I'm going to stop, because I want to get that pan heated up. I'll show you what we're going to use to cook these in. Oop, I missed a little bit over there. Okay. Turn it over. So this uh, chicken color over here is split a little bit. That's okay. It'll come back together when I bread it. And it'll hold together when we fry it. Just put a little bit more on top. Down there. And on that little piece, let's turn it over and see what we got. Looks good on this side. Okay, so we got three. So, time out. Let me turn that pan on. And for the cutlets, I don't cook them in a lot of oil. Some people are like deep fry them. I don't do that. I use, oh, and I forgot another thing, my nudge. I'm gonna do a little shout out to Milan. So let me, uh, I want enough, this is a big pan, so I want enough oil in here so it's gonna like come up to the side and that way they'll cook evenly on both sides. So this is my extra virgin olive oil. And even though I'm not going up like the 375 when I'm uh, deep frying something, I'm going to still add just a little bit of uh, canola oil so that we can bring up the smoking point of the olive oil. Now, because Cotoletto alla Milanese, they cook their cutlets just in butter with fresh sage. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter in here just to show respect to Milan where they've been making these, what I tell you, since like 1100. So I'm going to let this butter melt but I'm gonna turn down the flame, because as I said, I don't want, the, I'm gonna want these really to gently fry. But I gotta do one more, get these all set, and then we'll move to the pan. That's why I moved it off the heat. I don't want that to get too hot. Ooh, I'm so excited. I haven't had cutlets in a while. Thank you, Terry, for reminding me that I shouldn't bury the recipe for cutlets. It should have its own episode. So here we are with this episode of Lunch with John. Oh, so I took care of that guy who was desperate to make it. I told uh, Terry where she could find that uh, portion of that video where I actually made chicken cutlets and where she could find the post where the recipe was also. It was in that uh, cook-off video, but also I did a post about it. So about an hour later or so, 
she texts back a picture of her friend's misan plot. He immediately assembled everything that was in the recipe. He was ready to go. And then, maybe about an hour later than that, because I had to give him directions. I said, okay, make the cutlets. And then what you do is you just uh, make the marinade. And then you put a little bit of the sauce on the top of the cutlet. You add a little bit of grated pecorino, I mean of uh, parmigiano, and some thinly sliced mozzarella. And stick it under the broiler and you're done. They really look good. He showed, sent me a picture of the final product. So I think he and his friends and his family had a good dinner that night. So I've, Terry was happy that I bailed him out with a little of this private coaching. Okay. Let's see how our modernade. Oh, look. See? How nice and thick it's getting. So I'm going to let that go just a little bit more, and then I'll probably shut it off. But now let me get the oil and the butter here up to temperature so we can fry these. Take a little breadcrumbs. See if the oil is hot enough. If it sizzles, it's got to come up a little bit more. Make sure the butter and the oils are well mixed. Okay. This one looks like it could use a little bit more on the, that first side. Let me get these in. I hope I can get all four. Let me test it. Yeah, I'm getting a, I'm getting a little sizzle. It's what I want. I don't want to crowd these. But I want to try to get them. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. Okay. We'll do three and then we'll finish the last one. Turn the heat up just a little bit. Because we want uh, these to gently fry. Make sure there's oil around all of them. And if these shrink, nah, there's no way I'm going to get another one in there. Okay, we'll do these three. Just taking a look, we're getting a nice little gentle sizzle. Okay, what a, I don't need this. I don't need what the chicken was in. I'm done with the flour and the egg wash. But I'm, I'm going to show you at the end. I had a lot of egg wash left over there. You may not like this, but... Waste not, want not. Let me turn this around a little bit over here. Make sure everything's in the oil. And I think I got that at a nice sizzle, so let me turn down the flame. Again, we want this to fry gently, so I don't want it, that heat to get too much. And I'm checking over here, and I think we're good. When I get to this point and I can cut through, I don't know if you can see that. I can see the bottom of the pan. That means most of the water is gone. There's still a little bit more. I'm just going to increase the heat on this and then I'm going to shut it off. And as it cools, more of that water will steam off. See how we're doing here. Okay. Ah, just starting to pick up the color. Okay. Now, you can bake these in the oven. But the way I'm doing them, these cutlets are going to be fully cooked. So you don't need the heat of the oven to finish cooking them, right? They're already done. So I'm going to turn on my broiler to high and let that start heating up. And it looks like my camera's slipping a little bit. Let me go adjust this without making everything fall over. 
Okay. Stay there. We got a jerry rig setup over here. Yeah. Just need another 30 seconds or so. And I got a nice steam going on the mod and not I'm shutting it off. And you'll see steam still coming up up there. Okay, come on, cutlets. I need room for this one. Let's get going here. Fill a little bit more. Gently, gently, gently. Make sure they're all in oil. I may have to add a little bit more after I take one of them out. There we go. Look at that. I can stay that way a little bit more. He is a big guy. There we go. And if I need to, I'll turn them over again. But I'll show you that one when I take it out. Oh. Where's the plate I'm going to put them? I guess I should get another one. That's the only thing I don't like. Every time I do a lunch with Johnny episode, I got so many dishes to do. Everybody complains. They say, when I'm in the kitchen, I dirty everything. That's okay. Today I'm going to be cleaning myself. But after I eat some of this. Okay, let me see how this guy's doing. A little bit more on that side. Good. They're cooking up nice. Get some paper towel to put on this clean dish. Soak up a little bit of the, the cooking oil and the butter. So why the butter? Even if you only put a teaspoon, two teaspoons, uh, table, tablespoons, in, you're going to get a little bit of that nutty butter flavor. And I don't want to be disrespectful to the folks up north where they only cook their cutlets, those big elephant ears with the bone in, veal chop, and butter and fresh sage. Delicious. So I don't know if I told you, the first time I ever had the bone in uh, veal chop, pound it out to make the elephant ear, it wasn't in Milan. I was in a little restaurant. We were staying at a hotel off of uh, Via Condotti in Rome, the big shopping street. And downstairs was a, a restaurant. I thought it might, it might have been called uh, Ristorante 76 or something like that. And they had the veal chop cutlet on the menu. I never had it. So I said, I got to get this. It was delicious. And then, I never had it again in Italy. A couple of years ago, we got together at a, a really wonderful restaurant in uh, New York City's Greenwich Village. It's a place called Carbone's. It's on Thompson Street in the village, Mario Car Carboni. This place used to be called Rocco's. We used to always go there with my family because there was this old guy from Naples in the kitchen. So we, we'd want to go for lunch. We'd look and see if he was in the kitchen. If we was there, we would go in and we'd have a nice meal, Neapolitan food. If he wasn't there, we, we didn't go in. So hold on a second. He finally retired, but this place was so venerated that when Mario took it over, he simply put his name, Carbone, over the original neon on the sign that said Rocco's. So that was just out of respect to the restaurant that everybody really enjoyed, Neapolitan food. So he had it. So I'm trying, I made it here. I had Graziano down in Little City. I said, I never made the bone in. 
So Graziano is from Tuscany. He knew about these elephant ears. So he uh, cut me a nice veal chop. He pounded it all down. And I made it for myself when I got back from New York. Delicious. Oh, these are looking good. Gonna have to put a little bit more oil and butter in here for that last one. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, on, on the on the on the website post. I'm gonna try to put a picture of that what it looks like that elephant ear cutlet. These are looking good. I think they're about ready to come out. Ah. Another minute or two. Okay, I noticed I'm uh, depleted a lot of the oil. So I'm going to find a spot here where I can add a little bit more to finish these off and to cook this last one. And I'll put a little bit more butter. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. I hope this doesn't run over. I like to have these last about 40 minutes. And recipes that go stove to table in about 30. This one's going to be a little longer. Oh, beautiful. These are looking good. Nice. Spreading it here, nothing's falling off. I think we're in good shape. Just let these finish. I, I want to get a nice golden, a light, toasty color on these before I take them out. And they're almost there. Yeah, we're good. Take this first one out. See? Nice color. I'll bring it over there so you can see. But most importantly, I want to make room here for the last cutlet so we can move on with the Parmesan or two. So I think I got another, enough room, a little bit of extra olive oil. Don't hurt nothing. And it's going to stay here to on this side of the pan to heat up. Okay, let me put this one in. Excuse my hand. Good. That one fits nicely. And I think this one's going to come out. Yep, gorgeous. Check this one. Now, see, this one needs a little bit more. The other thing is, by cooking them slowly and letting them get to this toasty brown color, it's going to crisp up that breading. So you're going to get that nice crispy first bite of the breading, and then all of the flavor that's in the egg wash, and the still tender and hopefully juicy chicken. Okay, this guy's ready to come out. So I need a little bit more. Move that last one over. And make sure that cooks up. Sauce is ready. So as soon as I get these out, we'll, uh, we'll make the... Uh, the a la, a la parmesan. Tilt the pan and make sure I get oil all around this new one I just put in. And I think this guy's ready to come out. Right, let me turn it over one more time. So these are fully fully cooked. Ooh, that one's a, wants a break. I gotta hold, pick it up with two hands. It's too hot. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll move this one over there and let it finish cooking. I think I got to turn down my heat a little bit. You see how this is going? But then I'm going to come over there 
and show you what these guys look like. Beautiful. Look at these. What do you think? Think these will be edible? So now, if I'm just making these, I'll just put them on a plate with a, a little wedge of lemon. And then just if I want to sprinkle a little bit of the lemon on, on the chicken cutlet. When I plate them up, I'll show you that. Increase the heat here so it can get going. <laughs> Broiler's going, teating the oven up a little bit too. So that's good, but we don't need that oven heat. I just want the, the heat coming directly down from the broiler onto the cutlet. So I guess I can start putting these together and get two of them under the broiler because I'm going to keep two without Parmesan and two with. So let me take this off, put it right there. Which one? Eh, I'll do this one. Now, where the hell is it? I lost my spoon. Oh, it's over here, still in the dish with the tomatoes. Okay, so here we go with this. See how nice and thick the sauce is? So you don't want to drench this. So put a little bit, go almost out to the edge with this beautiful marinade. That should be enough for this guy. And then we'll do the same thing with this one, a little bit smaller. Spread this out and see if I need a little bit more. Again, don't don't put you know a ton of sauce because that's just going to make everything get soggy. Okay, so I think we're good on that. Let me check this puppy. Nice, beautiful. Okay, then what? Back with my grater. Now I'm switching to the Parmesan. It's got to have Parmesan if it's all the Parmesan, right? Let me put them together. So this time I'm going on the smaller grate. I think I am. Yeah, I'll do it on the bigger one. Very lightly. And I'm going to get... So this is going to melt into the sauce. And then... I gotta find where the hell I put the mozzarella because we gotta put that on here too. Sorry guys, I'm a little confused today. I think because I got all so excited about my Christmas gift from Italy. Oh, I think I put the, I left the, left the, the mozzarella in, in the, oh, this one's done nice too. Okay. Shut this off. We're done with the pan. Put this over here. And I'll get the mozzarella. We're going to be eating soon. Okay, I got one that I already started to use. And I think I told you about this. This is that Gabon. I like this one. This is one I, I think I opened this up yesterday. So I'm going to use this. Now again, you don't want to load too much of mozzarella, right? You're building a symphony over here. Oh, look at all this cheese. I don't want to be cleaning that off of this pan. Let me get some of it up. And share it on both cutlets. Okay. My serrated knife. Thin slices. See what I can do. 
See, they're wiggling as I cut them. And I'm probably going to need like three for that big one and maybe two for the smaller one. Oh, I'm getting so excited. Well, I'm waiting for these under the broiler. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat some of one of those. But let's first things first. One, two, three here. One. You know what? I'm going to switch this bigger one out and put this one there. Okay? Dust off some more of this. You know, oh, okay. So, you know what happens if you have cheese on the cooking thing? It's going to be hard to get off. Okay, ready? So, here's what they look like. Okay. Not too much mozzarella, not too much of the marinara sauce. I'm about three inches down from that high broiler. These are fully cooked, so all I want to do is melt the mozzarella and get some color. Again, a toasty brown. Okay, I'm going to clear this and start it again. I'm going to clear up some of this stuff. Because we don't need it no more. Bring a dish back. So I don't think I need a big one. I think I can use this one. I got my... I got my... Where's my little knife? Ah, it's over here because I cut the butter. And I need a clean fork. Which one? I think I'm going to have this one, a little bit of it. And like we used to do in Jersey, kind of take a little squeeze of lemon just for old times sake. First, I'm going to have a bite. Without the lemon. Hey, the camera dropped again. Uh, let me go back up. It's getting loose. Sorry, guys. We got to increase our equipment budget. I don't want to lose everything here. So let me make sure this is secure. Not so much. Sorry, guys. Hold on. There we go. Okay, I think we're a little bit better. Okay. Stay. Before I put a squeeze, you're gonna have a little bite of this right here. I'm gonna come over there and show you. So it's still moist inside, it's fully cooked. Look at that. Here the crunch, that's our crispy breadcrumb. So you get that delicious mellow chicken, still moist, the flavorful egg wash, and the crunch of the breadcrumb. Again, don't go too high on the oil when you're cooking these. You know what? Good. Right. I'll try a little squeeze for one more bite. I don't know, but especially in the summertime, I think more we use the lemon in Jersey. Mm. That nice little acidic note, but it doesn't mix the full flavor of the chicken cutlet. Oh, these guys are done. One nudge. Of Just take this pan out. Again, 
You just want to melt the cheese on the top and get a little color. Look at this baby. Beautiful. Shut off the oven. We'll move this back over here and make room. Okay, I'm going to go for this one. Oh, it's stuck a little bit. Let me get my spatula. Let me make a deal with this. Walking around in circles. Must be the heat. Okay. So this one just started to pick up a little of the color. That's okay, because if you let, let it stay again, you don't want this to get hard. You just want this to get melted. And the camera's sinking, so I'm going to end this soon, guys. Get this back up. I'm going to take a bite of that for you. And shut this down before it falls down. Okay, let's see. This is with the Madanad. Look at that. Beautiful. Ah, it's too hot. Let me see. Take a little bite. Mmm. The mozzarella came on. You got the beauty of the cutlet, the sweetness of the marinara, and the silky melted mozzarella. Chicken cutlet a la parmigiana, and chicken cutlets plain. Before this falls down, ciao tutti, see you next time.